Okay, so when we're working with rash radical expressions when we have exponents on variables, it's really just a division idea. I mean, if you think about it, the concept of exponents, so 3 to the third, for instance, is really just a way to show multiplications, 3 times 3 times 3. The division version of that, like the, the next level division, I guess, would be the roots. So if I have the square root, and usually we don't have to put a 2 here, I'm just putting it here for right now. What I'm really saying is what number can I multiply by itself to get 4? So it's the reverse version, so it's 2 times 2 gives you 4, so the square root of 4 is just 2. So what we're going to look at when we deal with variables is the idea of, okay, so I have exponents of var or I have variables with exponents on it, what can I divide to make them work? So if I have the square root of x to the fifth and y to the sixth. The first thing I want to do is look at the index. If the index is 2, which goes right here, that's what I'm going to divide by. Really, I can rewrite this whole thing, and we'll get into that in a little bit, uh, as a rational exponent. So I could do x to the fifth times y to the sixth, and I could raise that whole thing to 1 half. So the fractional exponent is the same as doing the radical, but I'm not going to do that now. It's just sort of previewing what comes next in the thought line. So I'm going to change these, so I do 5 divided by 2. And you're going to have to go a little bit old school here and think about back in the days when you did remainders. We're not going to do 2.5, that wouldn't mean anything here. What we're looking for is how many groups we have and how many we have left over. So when I do 5 divided by 2, I'm going to break it out into two groups and then my remainder is 1 because 2 groups of 2 is 4. And then I have one left over, so I'm really just doing this. One group, two groups, one dot. So that's my remainder. The number of groups, I can actually pull them outside the radical because I have enough. It's like ascended to next leveldom. It no longer needs to be in the radical. So where I have two groups, that's my exponent on the outside. So I have x squared on the outside. Unfortunately, this one did not ascend into uh, above the radical, so it has to stay. So inside, I still leave an x to the first. Or you could just skip the first part and just leave it as x. So this told me that from original point, I had two groups. In 5, I had two groups of 2, and then one left over. For the y value, I'm going to do 6 divided by 2. 6 divided by 2 gives me 3 groups and a remainder of 0. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Usually the pen I write with is, unfortunately the pen I'm writing, I usually write with on these is broken, so I'm using a mouse, so pardon the terrible handwriting, not that my regular handwriting is much better. So I have 3 groups. All of these groups are allowed to move out of the, group, uh, out of the radical, so I no longer have any, because I have 0, I have no y's left underneath, and I bring out y to the third, just like that. And then you handle the number part the way that you would normally do it. If it's a square root, you need to find the squares that are inside the radical and pull them out in front, same as always. So let's do another one that doesn't have square roots, and we'll see if this is enough, and if it's not, I'll, you know, you can feel free to contact me, and I'll try to get you some more. So let's do the fourth root, which is pretty rare. And we'll say a to the 11th, b to the 3rd, and c to the 8th. First thing I want to do is identify my index. And if you don't see it, it means it's 2, but in this case it's 4. So for a, I'm going to do 11 divided by 4, and there are... 4 times 3 is 12, so that means only 2, 4 times 2, groups are there. And then I have a remainder of 3. So that means the value that stays underneath the radical will be 3. For 
3 divided by 4. I have 0, because you can't get a group of 4 and only have 3. And then my remainder is also 3. And then my 8 is 8 divided by 4 gives me 2 with the remainder of nothing at all, even a little bit. So now I'm ready to go back and finish everything up here. I'll go ahead and put my radical in like this. Now for my A value, I have two groups that are able to come out. So A to the second. But I have three individuals that stay underneath. So A to the third. For B, none of them come out. So there will be no B out here at all. End up with B with the remainder is 3 right there. And then finally for C, I did 8 divided by 4 and got 2. No remainder, so there's no C inside. That's good to go. So I'm just going to clear that up just a little bit. But I have two groups of C's that I can pull out in front. So C, the second power. And I know usually when you hear two groups, um, it's 2 times C. But in this case, I'm just using it to indicate like what the, variable, or the exponent is going to be on the variable when you pull it out. So... There you go. That's it. Essentially, you're just dividing by the index. Whatever, however many groups you have as complete groups, that's the number that is, ends up on the variable outside the radical. And the amount that remains, those stay inside that radical uh, just to kind of hang out there, I guess, until they can make more friends and then finally ascend out. So I hope this helps.